Hi all, this is Dana here. In this video I'm going to be showing you a little project that I worked on. Uh, this is a framed project, one of my cross stitch pieces that I just finished. Uh, it's called Solarized Dahlia. It's actually available in my shop if you wanted to have a look at the actual pattern. Uh, it's available either as the individual panels or as a set of four. So what I'm, in this project I'm going to be teaching you is how to do some uh, framing. So um, it's going to be a really simple little project. You don't have to know how to cut your own mat board or anything like that. Although I do have a video explaining how to do that if you don't know how to do that already. Uh, I'll put a link to that one into the, the video description itself. And uh, so what I'm going to be showing you basically is how to actually stretch the embroidery fabric. So whether it's cross stitch or embroidery or any other kind of thing. Uh, the stretching part is actually pretty important uh, not only for keeping your project stable uh, but it also makes actually putting it into a frame a lot easier as then you're not dealing with a sort of a loose piece of fabric so to speak. So in the first picture here what you can see is uh, I had to actually do uh, some recutting of my mat. I bought a, a pre-made frame that had the mat board already cut but the window was actually cut to the wrong size so uh, in the picture you can see I had to recut that window which was fine. If you don't uh, have a mat cutter or you don't want to learn how to do that yourself uh, you can actually buy pre-made, uh, pre-cut mats from a lot of uh, framing shops or art shops, things of that nature. Uh, for most uh, sizes of frames and pictures you can get standard pre-cut ones that are a lot cheaper than going to a framer and getting one custom made for yourself. So that's that one there. And in the next picture here you can see uh, there is a... I actually use the box that the picture frame came in as my backing card for this. Uh, if you're going to be doing something that, say, you've spent, you know, like a year or something making and it's something that's going to be passed down for generations, uh, that kind of thing, something that's quite valuable, I would actually really highly recommend going to an art supply shop and getting some acid-free cardboard. Uh, the normal cardboard you get from packing boxes isn't terrible, but probably 10, 20 years, things like that, it's going to eventually start to yellow. Uh, and also, it depends on the... Uh, which frame you've chosen. Sometimes the thicker card like you get from a packing card or sorry a packing box isn't necessarily appropriate. You might want something that's quite thick and heavy but uh, isn't going to be have that sort of thickness as well. So as you can see in the picture here I've uh, marked out the size that I'm going to be cutting and I'm using a, it's a rehealable cutting mat and I'm also using a big Stanley knife and a pencil obviously to mark out my area. In this bit, uh, demonstration I'm actually making the backing panels the exact same size as the actual stitched panels and that's a little bit unusual. Most of the time what you're going to be wanting to do is cut your backing panel to be just slightly smaller than the size of your glass that's in, in your frame. The reason for that is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if you make it the same size as your glass, you're actually not allowing any extra space inside the frame for the uh, fabric to wrap around. Obviously the fabric's going to take up a little bit of space, so you do want to actually be really quite careful in measuring your uh, cardboard and making sure it's going to fit into your frame with the fabric wrapped around it once you've finished stitching it, and I'll show you how to do the stitching in a minute. Uh, so what you can do to test this is cut your cardboard to maybe, I don't know, about a quarter inch slightly smaller than your glass for your frame. Just loosely wrap your, uh, your stitch piece around it and stick it in your frame and make sure your frame can actually close. You might find that you need to cut a little bit more away of the cardboard just to make it the perfect size for that frame. But uh, as I uh, recommended in uh, the blog post, that I wrote about this as well, uh, which I'll put a link to as well in the video description. Uh, I would really recommend trying these uh, techniques if you've never done uh, stretching or anything before. I'd really recommend trying them uh, on a really small piece or even like a test piece of fabric just so you can kind of get the idea of uh, which size the card needs to be, uh, how to do the stretching itself. So in this picture here you can see that these are my individual stitch panels. Each uh, panel of the Solarized Dahlia pattern is uh, 4 inches square, so the actual cut area is around uh, 7 inches square. I was actually stitching on some leftover fabric, so uh, yeah, I just had some leftover and decided to use that. So I stitched them in a big long vertical row actually and then cut them all out individually. 
so to measure the cardboard, what I actually did is because uh, the mat for these was actually going to be four inches square each mat window. So that's why I matched the uh, size of the cardboard to the actual stitched area pretty much perfectly. Obviously the card had to be slightly bigger than the inside of the mat window. Otherwise, if it's the same size, it's going to fall through when you try to tape it up. I can show you in a, a couple of pictures from now uh, what it actually looks like uh, taped up on the back of the mat. So uh, if you have, say for example, some of my patterns are 10 inches by 10 inches square, and the frame I actually used for this particular project is exactly 10 inches square. So in that case, you don't really have to worry about using a mat board because your finished size, you know, whether it's uh, a full coverage piece like this one or not, uh, if your finished size is the same size as your frame size, then you don't have to worry about using a mat board. If however your finished size is going to be smaller than the frame you've chosen, then you will need to use a mat board. And then your cardboard needs to be just slightly bigger than the edge of the inside of the mat board because, like I said, if your cardboard is too small, it's just going to fall right through the window when you try to tape it to it. Uh, this will become a little bit clearer when you see the picture about how I've actually taped them onto the back of the mat itself. Thank you. So what I've done, is, as I said, I cut out my uh, individual panels. They're ready to go. And as you can see in this next picture here, I've cut out my uh, little bits of cardboard. They're just slightly bigger than the windows, so that way they're not going to fall through the, the mat frame windows, obviously. And I've laid them down onto the back of the canvas, so you can actually see that the cardboard is completely covering the stitching. And that's what you want. You don't want to be able to see any of your stitching underneath, otherwise your cardboard is obviously not going to be big enough. Uh, to fully uh, enclose your stitching. And in this next picture here, you can see I've started to do the actual stitching. What you're going to be wanting to do is make sure your uh, thread isn't going through your fabric too close to the edge, uh, particularly with um, the cross stitch fabric, embroidery fabric. If you get too close to the edge, you'll actually pull that entire row out and then you're going to have a lot less fabric to stitch with. So I stitched probably about five rows in and you're going to want to anchor your thread quite well and then stitch back and forth almost like a corset. So you're going to be wanting to do a couple threads back and forth, tighten it up a little bit, flip it over, make sure it, your the piece on the front is still centered on the card, flip it back over, stitch a little bit more. If you need to do some anchoring stitches every now and then just so it's a little bit easier for you to do that. And so you kind of work your way down the whole piece that way until you've hit uh, the other edge of the cardboard. And then obviously what you're going to do in this next one is you flip it around and you do the exact same thing on the other side. As I said, do make sure that you keep flipping it over and checking to make sure that you're actually stitching it at an even tension. The whole point of stretching it is to make sure that your piece lies square. Uh, obviously this wouldn't work for a round piece, but even then you're likely putting it into a square frame. So the whole point is to make sure, because sometimes when you're stitching, you know, you're tension can get a little off or um, you know when you're washing it and drying it you know everything can get slightly a little bit out of alignment so that's the whole point of stretching it is to not only make it easier for framing it helps keep your piece really nice and flat and sturdy. As you can see in the video where I've actually overlapped and done the second side uh, I haven't cut away any of the excess fabric you can actually clip the corners diagonally where the uh, fabric flips over and overlaps just to make it a little less bulky. I chose not to do that just because then you run the risk of maybe uh, pulling some threads out and then you're not be able to get an even tension. So like I said, this is why it's a really good idea to basically get your fabric to this stage around the cardboard. Before you stitch it, try folding it around the cardboard like this, stick it in your frame and make sure it's actually gonna close and uh, then adjust your cardboard size before you actually do any of this stitching. Because if you do all this stitching, try to put it in your frame and, it, and your uh, fabric is taking up a little bit too much space so you can't put it flat into your frame, it's gonna be a real pain to have to take it all apart and, and recut your cardboard and do it again. So here we go in our next little section here. You can see these are all four individual panels that I did. Uh, they're all framed individually, or sorry, uh, stretched individually. Like I said, if you're doing a piece where it's just one piece, I would. this is why it's really good 
uh, tip actually to when you're doing uh, any kind of cross stitch piece to leave quite a big border around your piece because that will actually allow you to do exactly this is to stretch your piece out or to leave enough um, fabric for the professional framer to stretch it out. So here you go, as promised, this is uh, what the back of the piece actually looks like once the panels have been taped in place on the back of the, the actual mat board. As I said, it's best to use acid-free tape if you can get a hold of any. Most art shops and uh, even framing shops should carry that for you. So what I did is I uh, actually did one corner of each one and then flipped it over, made sure it was straight inside the mat board, and then uh, carefully taped the other corners, and I did each panel like that individually. Obviously with four, it's a little bit tricky or trying to get them all lined up exactly perfect but uh, with if you're doing a m most people would do is uh, the one panel piece um, then that's actually a lot easier to make sure that it's squared and framed up perfectly on the inside of your mat so like I said just try to tape one corner in place and flip it over make sure that everything's aligned up and straight and looking perfect before you tape the other four corners down and then all you have to do is literally put the that into your frame, put the backing panel on and close it up, and then you're pretty much done. And here we are, back to the beginning. So this is a finished framed piece. As you can see, each panel is uh, squared off inside the mat board. Uh, as I said, you know, you flip everything over, make sure it's all nice and straight. Each panel's been stretched to an even tension. Uh, it's all firmly taped up inside the, the mat so nothing can go anywhere. And yeah, that's exactly how you would do a framing project. So coming up, we've got some more final tips for you. So in the next one here, I've got a few tips. I won't uh, bother reading them to you. You can uh, stop the video and read them yourself. Basically, just double check everything. Uh, if you're really unsure, do take it to a professional framer. Or if you have an unusually shaped piece, take it to a professional framer and ask for some advice. Uh, yeah, so basically just do whatever you can to make sure that uh, you practice this before you do it on a, a big piece. Uh, bigger pieces are going to be a little bit trickier to stretch anyway because they are bigger. It's harder to get the tension right in your stitching. Uh, so do practice on a little piece first and just have a go. I mean, like this is a, if you can figure this out and, and do this on your own, you can save hundreds of dollars in framing your own uh, cross stitch. Like I know lots of people spend huge sums of money framing their cross stitch. Uh, so this way you can save yourself some money, you can learn a new skill. Uh, this makes for great presents who do like little tiny pieces, say almost like even an ornament and you could actually frame it yourself and give it as a, a framed ornament for Christmas or whatnot or for birthdays. So it's a really neat skill to have. I really recommend people trying it, even if you're not comfortable doing it on your, you know, your heaven and earth designs or wh whatever you do you know, the really big giant ones, um, that's totally fine. But I would rec really recommend trying this because it isn't a difficult skill. You already know how to sew if you're doing embroidery and cross stitch. So it's pretty much just cutting some cardboard to size and sewing your piece around it and then sticking it in the frame. That's pretty much all it is. So like I said, if you have any questions or comments, if uh, what I've said doesn't make any sense um, or you're confused about something or you need some extra help, uh, Please do check the blog post first and see if any, I've addressed any of your questions and such there. Uh, there is actually also a free downloadable graphic that comes uh, with the blog post. So you can just go to the blog post and then download the graphic from there. It's like a little cheat sheet of everything that I've explained with some of the photographs. Uh, if you And if you still don't quite get it, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help answer any questions. And yeah, I hope you have a really good day and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.